Come and dine. We're, we even have a little section in the scriptures this morning about coming and dining. Uh, thank you, Brother Joe, uh, with the special that you brought with us. A great rendition, ballad, story that from a time of walking to a time of, uh, I tell you what, uh, only those who know the Savior as their Savior have that twinkling, inkling, little thought process of, you know what, I have no idea the magnitude of what it's like to be in heaven face to face, that laying that final burden down. But man, I sure do look forward to those words, well done, thou good and faithful servant, come and in. And, and so, uh, you know, Oh, I, you know what? I, I'm an animal lover for the most part. I'm one who does the animal rendition of cleanup. <laughs> and I might not like that. And, I, and, and if, God has an, if God has your dog or whatever pet you have or you have valued or some of you guys, that's not theological. I don't care. You know what? First of all, none of us are in heaven. God might even have a dog up there. You, you just never, I'm not going to say yay or nay. I'm going to say this, that uh, if there is, there is no pooper scoopers. <laughs> but uh, the only reason I say it, the kids were watching a the movie. They have watched this series. It's about a dog's life, a dog's purpose, a dog's journey. And it's this, this it's a, a, a books, and I don't read books very well, but this movie of the books was this dog and the dog died and, and, and none of this is theological don't take it home okay it's not scriptural or anything I'm just telling you a story okay the dog died and the dog um, came back in another dog this is how the Hollywood does it okay and through all these stories the dog was always taking care of the owner and, and the owner always had a connection to the original owner and uh, at the very end, you know, I don't know about you guys, I don't cry a whole lot in movies, but if a dog dies, I kind of cry. And, uh, and because the dog kept dying, there was a lot of crying, because the dog kept dying. And at the very end of the movie the kids watched yesterday, um, not only did the dog die, but the original owner died. And they made it out like the dog went to heaven and so was the owner. Hollywood messes it up, okay? But the thought process of pure joy in heaven, they can't mess up. And if you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that last breath which the earth will call is death, is always still life and pure pure joy if you are a follower of Christ and I don't you know all that other stuff I don't know what God's gonna do but whatever joy is going to be in that realm man God I can't wait can't wait that's kind of almost like that was it Paul Paul man there I want to go to heaven forget all of you guys this is my paraphrasing. Forget all of you guys. I just want to go to heaven now. And then Paul's like, but actually, I also know that I still have this to do. And because he has not called me home, I will still do this so that others will come to know the Savior, to hear those words, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Uh, we are still in the book of, of Mark. And some of you are probably going to think, when is that nut job going to get out of the first chapter? <laughs> because we're still in the first chapter. And, and, and even though the writer of Mark, he writes in breakneck speed. Okay, by that I mean this. You're going to find the words suddenly, immediately, right after this happened, this happened. And that's how Mark writes. Yet Pastor Brent goes super slow. We're still in chapter one. Because there's so much that is beautiful in this chapter, especially uh, Mark chapter 1, I'm down to verse 21. So if you have your Bibles or the Bible that's in 
front of you, um, Mark chapter 1, going down to uh, verse 21, you'll realize that that is right after um, the, uh, the calling of the disciples. Remember, uh, I talked uh, uh, last week especially about uh, how he called Andrew and his brother Simon, known to be Peter, and then uh, after, uh, and right after that, he's walking the shore and he says, hey, John, uh, excuse me, uh, John, uh, James, the son of Je uh, Zebedee, and John, uh, those two brothers, come and follow me. They put their nets down, they left their dad, and they and followed. And here we are at verse 21. And read down to, I believe it's 28 for the moment. Jesus and his companions went to the town of Capernaum. When the Sabbath day came, he went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching, for he taught with real authority, quite unlike the teachers of religious law. Almost like the verses we had earlier in our New Testament reading. Suddenly, there's one of your words, suddenly a man in the synagogue who was possessed by an evil spirit cried out, Why are you interfering with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus reprimanded him. Be quiet. Come out of the man, he ordered. At that, the evil spirit screamed threw the man into a convulsion, and then came out of him. Amazement gripped the audience, and, when, and they began to discuss what happened. What sort of new teaching is this? They asked excitedly. I should have said, man, what sort of new teaching is this? They asked excitedly. Sometimes you got to have a good... This was cool! <laughs> what new teaching is this? It has such authority, even evil spirits obey his orders. The news about Jesus spread quickly throughout the entire region of Galilee. Cause and effect. Cause and effect. It's kind of like, I do like the picture um, that is presented up on the screen that I can't remember what it's called, where you have the, the, the balls hanging down and, you, and there is just something, I don't know about you guys, um, there used to be a store in the mall called the Wonder Store or something like that. And it wasn't Wonder Bread. It was like Wonder Things, like really cool things. And they would have stuff like this where it's that pendulum kind of action thing. And I don't know about you guys, but for me, it, it's got to be a touch store. By that I mean this. If I'm going to see that and there's those balls hanging there, I have got to grab that one ball and just kind of click it to see. And then you stand there in amazement like click, 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 click. Just... Will it stop? No, it won't. Click, 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 click. You know, or you go to the, the, uh, the uh, I, I just think of a Griffith Park with, where you look at the stars. I love astronomy. And so there is, I believe, the pendulum that hangs down. And you know what all tourists do? What we do, we go and we go and look at it. I wonder if it's moving. There's just something about it that, that just kind of brings you in. And so there is a cause in effect, I'm going to say it this way. The cause is this one ball clicking, and the effect is the other ball kind of moving. The pendulum swinging. The cause is the earth spins. The effect is the pendulum moves. That's just the way it is. Or the cause is, um, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen where someone's done, like, the, the uh, 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 let me think for a moment, it would, it would be... Uh, like not Ripley's Believe It or Not, but it's like the Guinness World Book of Records where someone goes, how many dominoes can I line up and do the what? The cause and the effect. The cause is to knock the first domino over and to the effect is every domino in that line, in that circle, in whatever it is, fall down. Cause and effect. Here we have a cause and effect. And so the cause is the Savior. It is always about the Savior. That is the cause. The effect follows it. So if you're taking notes, the first cause is they went to a town and what happened when church day came? The cause is Jesus in the church day and what was the effect? They went to church. I'm going to help you out here. 
because I want us to grasp within who we are as a people that if Jesus Christ is the cause, if he is the one, the effect upon my person, upon my spirit, upon my soul, upon all that I am is the cause of Jesus on his examples. His examples are the cause. The effect is how does it do upon my life? I go to church. Why? Because I love my Savior. Not because it's a building, which is really, if you begin to just look around, it's really a cool building. The architecture of the beams above you, man, that holds up a tiny, skinny little roof. Man, that is cool. And the, the, the stained glass windows in the front especially. And then there's little things. A place that is always beautiful to come and worship in. See, we don't, we don't, we sometimes take things for granted, but there's this cause and effect. And so I love my church. Go to church. The cause would be this. Not only did he go to church, the, he began to teach. The cause now is the Savior teaching. And as he teaches, you got to really grasp that what took place is that people because of what Jesus, who he was, and what he did, we have to go in that realm, what he taught, how he taught it, all of that, the effect was those people were amazed. I love the writing of Mark because he really emphasizes it was not a boring thing. It was not this little on the side little thing. It was, look what happens with you are in the presence of the Savior. No one teaches like him. And here you have this effect of people that are amazed at what's going on. The other effect that takes place in that little section of scripture is you have one who is filled with, the, with an evil spirit. And when the cause, the Savior comes in, the effect is this. Whoa, what are you doing here? Are you here to... Dish See, when the Savior comes in... Things change. Are you here to destroy us? Are, are you here to interfere with us? Why are you here? In fact, we know who you are. See, here's the thing. When, when, when people come face to face truly with the Savior, you have this, this one thing. You either know who he is or you deny who he is. You either take who he is or you reject who he is. Because no matter what, even here, the evil spirit goes, we know you are the Holy One of God. Jesus. Here's the thing. This, I like this. This is my own personal notes. When the cause is the Savior, the devil doesn't like anything that is happening with it. When the cause is the Savior, the devil doesn't like anything that is happening with it. And that is the same for the church. If the church follows the Savior, follows his teachings, loves like we're supposed to, do like we're supposed to, like other scriptures, doing what is right, all of that is following the Savior. The effect is the devil doesn't like what is happening within your family, within your body of Christ, within the children of God, within this congregation. I'm not blaming the devil. I'm just saying, in reality, he doesn't like when we start doing the things of the Savior. Here's the thing, though. This, if you want to grasp some things, man, man. <laughs> Don't be afraid of the devil. Because here, in the presence of the Savior, the effect is this. Even they obey him. <laughs> yeah. Even they obey Jesus. Here's the thing. If you go to the Dead Sea Scrolls, anybody know about the Dead Sea Scrolls? If you're a history buff or, or any kind of those history channel like things, and the, and the Dead Sea Scroll episode comes, I'm like, wow, this is kind of cool. They actually find things uh, of that era of Jesus back in the time where they were writing them in such a way and they still found them and they're valuable, not monetarily, but they are valuable with the things of taking place there. And if you look in some of those Dead Sea Scrolls, 
there's an actual area that talks about um, how to um, get rid of evil spirits. In fact, they have, the, they have incantations. And, and here's where the world gets messed up. Because if the Dead Sea Scrolls has incantations to get rid of dead spirits, then you got all these other evil people that go, all you need is this incantation to get rid of evil spirits. If you have a poltergeist in your house, all you need is this incantation. If you'll just take this piece of paper and read these words, then the evil spirit will leave. And, and, and I understand because even if it happened back then, I understand why it happens now. Because people are messed up with that thought process. Because here's what they have missed. Because here in, in, in Mark, it's not that Jesus, you don't see anything where he goes, well, just a minute, Mr. Evil Spirit. Uh, okay. Now, the Lord in heaven, whoa, that's the wrong incantation. I'm sorry. Just a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Jesus didn't do none of that. Jesus spoke with the authority that he has to ask, to tell the evil spirit, get out of him. And that evil spirit didn't have to go, which incantation was that that he did to us? Because if it was the wrong one, we're staying. No, the evil spirit leaves, obeys the Savior. Cause and effect cause and effect the beautiful thing of that thing right there is in as we continue to read as Jesus does what he does it always leads to something else more beautiful that God is doing that the Holy Spirit is at work that the, the Savior himself is doing what Jesus does affects everything down the road down the road and so verse 29, Jesus left the synagogue with James and John. Remember them two guys I talked about? He left church with James and John. And guess what he did? He went to Simon in Andrew's house. So Mark, is, he's written this out in such a way to grasp an understanding. For these moments, guys, with cause and effect, and when I, when I talk about how much I love the church, it's not just a building or a place to come on Sunday or a place to come on Wednesday or a place to be in my office. It's not that. It is this thing where it is wrapped around the arms of God. God just has this, this, this you know, if you talk to Jim Lyon, who's one of our leaders of the Church of God movement, the tribe. And, 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 and I, I kind of was like, wow, I'm trying to grasp that. But I'm going to tell you what, no matter how you look at it, God has this place anointed upon. Okay, and, and so people come together because, or we should, we like each other. Well, let me get a little deeper cause and effect. Because of the Savior, I actually love you guys. I love you guys. And for sometimes it's hard. You know what? Because people, we have our, our, our problems, you know, our issues. I love the fact that it's the brothers. Because when I read about brothers in the scriptures, I often wonder about... You know, my brother, he's passed now, but, and he was a year younger than me, a year and one month. And I'm going to tell you, when you have closeness like that, ah, the love comes out like this sometimes. <laughs> and so I kind of wonder, I'm going to tell you what, because that's reality where we have differences of opinion, difference of ideas, but we still serve the same God this, under the same Holy Spirit's direction under the same love and in no matter what discrepancy we have what dispute we have there's always the opportunity of the example of the cause of the Savior which is forgiveness and forgiveness always heals families always heals yeah. tribes always heals congregations it just does cause and effect so he goes to Simon and Andrew's house now Simon's mother-in-law was sick in bed with a high fever. They told Jesus about her right away. So he went to her bedside, took her by the hand, and helped her sit up. And the fever left her, and she prepared a meal for them. I want you to just, under this, 
Man, it's cause, this whole thing is cause and effect, cause and effect. Suddenly, they, they, it, once again, they told her right away, hey, Jesus, she's sick, really sick. And I joked around with, uh, with Brother Bud and, and Sister Jane on Wednesday because, you know, some of us know this story as, you know, Jesus heals uh, Peter's mother-in-law and, and, and Jane, right? And guess what she did? She got up and made him a meal. And in my head, as we're joking, I'm like, well, of course, they just left church. They needed to eat lunch. <laughs> The same thing you guys are going to do. You hope that there's a meal after the service, after the gathering of people. We hope there's some dining that's going to take place. And if the one is sick, then we hope the cause is the Savior to heal her, to get her up out of bed, to do what she does best, make a meal. I'm joking with it, like I did with them. The beauty of it is this. The cause of the Savior always sees everything that we're going through, and he does. And so she's healed. Remember this, that they were amazed already at his teachings. They're amazed at how a, a evil spirit left a guy. They're, they're just in awe of what is happening. And, and word spreads, hey, this guy, Jesus, he, he is causing everything to go the opposite of what we've ever known. And the, a, a, can you imagine? Because we have to grasp what's taking place. It's church time. Church is over. We walked our few steps that we're allowed to walk or whatever it is. Of these, these, there's Jewish laws. There's, there's, there, there's all these things. But I, I know this, that somehow word is getting around that wait did he just heal someone who was really really sick and he did that thing with the with the evil spirit there's a guy in town that, that does stuff like that man and ready what time is it oh man we still got some sabbath stuff to do ding 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 man is i sure hope he still stays in town Ding, 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 because we can't go nowhere because it's set. Oh, yes! That evening, after sunset, after the time frame that they couldn't be doing some stuff and traveling and getting to places, after that time, can you imagine? All I can think of is like the Flintstones or something. I'm going to try this. I, you guys know I got, uh, my back hurts a little bit, but sometimes you just... Uh, you know, I, they had to make the fastest line to the house where the cause was, where the Savior was, to, to, um, to see this man who casts out evil spirits without an incantation, with only the authority given him by God. And then they get to the house and, go, oh, and he healed the mother-in-law? Can we make a little side joke here? Not mom, the, mo the mother-in-law. No. <laughs> See, you guys got to find that there's a beauty in family. It just is. And so here you have the mother-in-law healed. And these people, right at the time that they were allowed to go, they got there. And ready? I'm at verse 32. Many sick. And demon-possessed people were brought to Jesus. That house had, that was a good house church. It was packed. Many. In fact, I highlighted this. The whole town gathered at the door to watch. You know, I, I don't know how, how big the town was. But let's just take a few blocks of Culver City. Can you imagine if the cause of God was active in this church at all times and was told to others, there's one who does this. Now, please don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not saying that's what's going to knock the doors down. I'm saying the cause is tell something. Because I tell the truth, I don't care what door they knock down. 
It's about the kingdom. It's about, you know, I taught that story about the guy who saw his dog in heaven. Can you imagine when you see people that you thought would never be in heaven, in heaven, because the cause made an effect on a life? Wow. They all gathered at the door to watch, and Jesus healed many people who were sick with various diseases, and he cast out many demons. Can you imagine? They were like, I can't help but go back. There was no, turn, no time to turn pages. It was you, out. Leave the man. Leave the woman. You that are sick, be healed. You, rise up. You don't have to make dinner because dinner was already made. You, be healed. You, be healed. You have your strength back. You have your, 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 your ability to um, just reason back. You have this. You have that. Let me heal, heal, heal. Only not that I am healing, but I am sent by my Father to heal. Why do I say that? It says, he cast out demons, but because the demons knew who he was, he did not allow them to speak. And we're still in the same time frame. Because before daybreak, in verse 35, before daybreak the next morning, Jesus gets up and he goes out to an isolated place to take notes pray to pray see none of this is not see what an example some people go man it's jesus and so i'm going to be like jesus i'm going to do all this stuff and i'm going to forget the pray part pray 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 jesus goes out and prays later simon and the others went out to find him when they found him ready for the effect they said everyone is looking for you. Everyone is looking for you. And Jesus replied, we must go to other towns as well and I will preach to them too. That is why I came. So he traveled throughout the region of Galilee preaching in the synagogues and casting out demons. Pastor Mark, I'm going to ask you to come up. We're about to sing a beautiful song. Cause and effect. Guys, I'm telling you, I, I love the scriptures. I love how it, it represents life. Some of you may be sitting here t this morning going, that's not life. That's just not life because you're not quite following the way you probably should. And we all are there. It's easy for me to stand up here and go, pray, 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 pray. And I'm going to tell, uh, you know, I'm going to tell you, there's been times, I had the, the roughest two weeks in a long time, where it's frustrating, and I'm not going to go into all the details, but I'm going to tell you this, there was times and moments where I would just stop and go, God, I'm so sorry, I didn't even thank you just for the breath of the morning, before all damage was about to take place, I didn't even go, God, thank you for today. I have no idea what it's going to be like. God, thank you for today. I'm going to tell you what, though. Even though on those days where I might have forgotten to pray early on, and destruction came my way, and, and the devil enjoyed his little time of beating me up a little bit, and all that stuff, man, I was good enough to know to go, God, man, this is the time. I'm so, this is how my prayer went. I am so sorry I forgot oh, of any thanking or direction. Uh, we have to be honest. If you're a follower of Christ, you've got to be honest, okay? And I am so sorry. And it's not because of that. I'm, see, some cause, don't get your cause and effects messed up. Well, that's because I didn't pray, so this is why. No, 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 no. Because I'm going to tell you what the, the effect was. Man, it's up against me in this moment. God, help me. Help me. Man, I'm telling you what, the day thought processes are different when it takes place. It does change things. Because you can be so angry at everything, and all of a sudden someone's going to do something to you. And I'm going to tell you, one, day, one, one of the prayer days was, wow, I still have no idea how that person's day is going. It, it made me look at things different. We hold on to the cause. And find out what the effect is going to be that surrounds you. Sometimes God's going to show it to you. 
Sometimes you will not see it. I'm going to tell you what, there's going to be people that are sitting in the sanctuary right now that have no idea that they had a cause effect on someone. They talked to someone, and as they talked to someone, that connection connected to another someone. And I heard the story of that someone about this someone, and this someone right here in the middle who possibly does not know the Savior has been affected by stories on these sides. And it makes me look at the day a whole lot different. We should be a people where we want everyone to be looking for Jesus. As Pastor Mark is about to come and lead us in this song. Sometimes we sing just as I am without one plea. And we think of Billy Graham, which is okay. Or we think of uh, Gre Greg Laurie, who's about to do a uh, harvest over in, in, in your beloved Angel Stadium. So people can come to know the Savior. And a lot of times we think of just as I am without one plea. We think of that as, that is a salvation song. That's where you come to the altar crying song. That's where you stand in your pew holding on tight song. Oh, that's, that's where I'm about to change song. I'm going to tell you what, if you read those words, and as we sing those words of just as I am, it is for even followers of Christ. Because you know what, some days in your life, you have a blot. You have a spot. You have something that has come up as a, a sin within your life, be it a thought, be it an action, or what. You know, we are not absolutely perfect. But the Holy Spirit is guiding us and directing us, and I know that. But there's times where there's a stumble. There's some times where there's a trip as a follower of Christ. And that same song, that same Savior, that same cause can cleanse me from every spot. Cause and effect, even as we sing a beautiful song. So as we sing, I'm, one last, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk away from Mark chapter 1 for one verse. Rome, and some of you have it memorized sometimes maybe. Romans chapter 6 verse 23. For, yes, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord cause and effect sin cause death effect Jesus Christ our Lord cause gift of eternal life effect let that be your life man even as a follower of Christ you, you'll have that one blot and I know one who can cleanse each and every spot let us stand God we thank you for these moments what a beautiful place to worship, to be in the presence always, but in a moment, slow down and celebrate it with others, your holiness. God, if there's some here this morning that they're walking with that spot, help them to ask one thing, forgive me. Cleanse me of my sin. Draw us close to you, God, in every step of our life. That you, the cause, is lived out in us that affects everything around us. Not for us, but for you. In Jesus' holy name, amen.